Nickelodeon launched on December 1st, 1977 as the first cable network dedicated exclusively to children's programming. Since then, the channel has aired hundreds of series and shown thousands of episodes. However, despite the expansion of the channel into other networks such as Nicktoons and Teen Nick, some episodes are no longer available for viewing. Some scenes from shows such as Rocco's Modern Life, SpongeBob SquarePants, and You Can't Do That on Television have been censored or banned outright. Hey folks, welcome to The Binger. In this video, we're going to look at 10 episodes from Nick shows that have had a ban hammer dropped on them due to their content. One of the great things about Nickelodeon is that it offered viewers a chance to see animated shows that didn't fit in on other networks. In the early 90s, one of these shows was Rocco's Modern Life, a show about an Australian wallaby trying to navigate life in America. The show was one of the most popular in the Nicktoons lineup throughout its run. Rocco, Heifer, and Philbert even came back for a Netflix special in 2019 titled Rocco's Modern Life Static Clink. The 21st century is a very dangerous century. Rocco was also known for having its share of adult humor throughout the series. Many of these jokes, including one about a hotel with hourly rates, slid past the censors. But at least one scene brought the ban hammer down on the maladjusted marsupial. In the series' second episode, Leapfrogs, Rocco is mowing the lawn of his neighbor, a toad named Mrs. Bighead. When Mrs. Bighead sees Rocco, she tries to reenact The Graduate with her as Mrs. Robinson to young Rocco's Benjamin Braddock. In one scene, Mrs. Bighead unplugs her VCR and asks Rocco to fix it. When he plugs it in, she plays a documentary on the mating habits of toads. Remember, Mrs. Bighead is a toad, so you can do the math from there. Her attempts to seduce Rocco lead to disasters ranging from her ripping a fancy red dress to Rocco losing his fur in a ceiling fan. The episode was banned for nearly a decade as the network brass didn't want their audience to see Rocco fooling around with a married woman, uh, toad. The episode finally aired uncensored on Nicktoons in 2002 and is available on DVD and iTunes. Imagine being one of 11 siblings. Now imagine being the only boy in that family with five older and five younger sisters. Now imagine the wait times for the bathroom every morning. If you're 11-year-old Lincoln Loud, you don't have to imagine it. It's your life. With that many sisters, it's easy to imagine all different types of personalities. There's the bossy eldest sister, Lynn, the rock and roller, Luna, the prankster, Luann, and young tech genius, Lisa, among others. But the most competitive of Lincoln's 10 sisters has to be Lynn, two years his senior. In the second season episode, Linner Takes All, Lynn's competitive nature drives Lincoln and the rest of the family to distraction. When Lynn wins at board games, she celebrates like she just won the Olympic gold medal. She also brags and rubs it in their faces after her victories in games that resemble Uno, Monopoly, and Settlers of Catan. She is so obnoxious! The family even sets her up in games that she is sure to lose, but somehow she pulls out the W and keeps up the trash talk. Lynn even wants to prove that she can brush her teeth faster than anyone, so she uses four toothbrushes at the same time. In the episode as it aired, Lynn's vigorous brushing caused one of her front teeth to fall out. However, in an early storyboard of the episode, Lynn's efforts caused her gums to bleed profusely. Some fans have speculated that network censors didn't want to show blood in what was supposed to be a kid's show. However, the show often depicts Lincoln's friend Clyde dealing with nosebleeds, especially when he talks to Lincoln's sister, Lori. Maybe nosebleeds are somehow funnier than gingivitis? Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Only one of Nickelodeon's biggest stars is all. SpongeBob SquarePants has been a fixture on the network for nearly two decades. In all that time, the title character has served as the loyal fry cook at the Krusty Krab. SpongeBob must have gotten amazingly good at flipping burgers after all these years. His boss, the penny-pinching Mr. Krabs, doesn't want to give him a raise or promotion. In the season three episode, Just One Bite, SpongeBob learns that his coworker, Squidward Tentacles, has never tried the diner's signature dish, the Krabby Patty. That's me, never had one, never will. When Squidward takes a single bite, he instantly falls in love with the culinary creation. He even tries to break into the patty vault after hours just so he can get another taste. Unfortunately for the sneaky cephalopod, there's one area where Mr. Krabs spares no expense, the protection of his precious patties. When the episode first aired, Squidward encountered a makeshift burglar alarm that included a bucket of clear liquid. 
Squidward takes one sniff and learns that the liquid isn't water, it's gasoline. Squidward's attempt to break into the vault caused the gasoline to spill on the floor, catch fire, and cause an explosion. The scene was deleted from future airings in most countries as well as from home video releases. Fans speculated that the scene was deleted due to its airing shortly after the tragedy of September 11, 2001. SpongeBob showrunner Vincent Waller released a statement on his Twitter page about the deleted scene. Waller tweeted that the network asked them to remove the scene because they didn't want young viewers to watch a gag involving gasoline and a lid mask. Peppa Pig is a show targeted at preschoolers. The show features a wholesome message about the importance of family, friendship, and good behavior. Its family-friendly content has earned Peppa and her pals iconic status in the UK, the US, and China. The popular porker even has her own theme park in England, putting her in competition with a certain stateside mouse. So how could an episode of such a wholesome show get banned? The content of the banned episode has less to do with Peppa and her four-legged friends. Instead, it has to do with a certain eight-legged creature with a less-than-stellar reputation. In the episode Mr. Skinny Legs, Peppa's brother George finds a spider in the bathroom sink. Where most youngsters would run screaming from the room, George befriends the arachnid and adopts it as a pet. When he brings Mr. Skinny Legs to Peppa's tea party, she freaks out, as do Mummy and Daddy Pig when they see the size of the creepy crawler. Peppa's parents reassure her that the spider isn't dangerous and they let the spider stay for Peppa's tea party. The episode tries to teach kids a lesson about judging people or animals based on appearance. While the principle behind the episode seems to provide a useful lesson for kids and adults, some officials down under disagreed. Censors in Australia banned the episode, as well as another arachnid-related episode entitled Spiderweb. The reason? Officials did not want to encourage young Aussies to make friends with spiders. Well, that's because most Australian spiders are less likely to sit down for a tea party and more likely to inject their venom into an unsuspecting guest. Before all that, before Kablam, before Roundhouse, there was the granddaddy of all Nick sketch shows. You can't do that on television. This Canadian sketch comedy show premiered on Nickelodeon in 1981 and quickly became one of the channel's most popular programs. One of the recurring gags that made it so popular was when a cast member would say water, they'd get a bucket of H2O dumped on their heads. If they said, I don't know, they'd get a load of green slime dropped on their noggin. I don't know if I'm her daughter. It's a trope that Nick shows and events still use to this day. The show's most famous cast member, singer Alanis Morissette, has only appeared in five of the show's 144 episodes. Isn't that ironic? Alanis, you must have a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> oh. For a sketch show that pushed the envelope with its content, one fact that's not at all ironic is that one of its episodes would get banned. The 1987 episode titled Adoption was written around the premise of the mistreatment of adopted children. The episode starts with a joke about an adopted child being used for target practice. Some of the sketches included one in which an adoptive parent takes in a child only to use him as a live-in housekeeper. The sketch also has a joke which proposes that adopting a child is cheaper than a dog. When the parent tries to return the child to the adoption agency, he learns that adoption is forever. The episode aired twice on Nickelodeon, but received a swift blow from the mighty Banhammer a short time later. The episode was edited in Canada, not for its content, but for a line that used language unsuitable for a kid's TV show. You get over here right away, you damn bureaucrat! It began as a gritty, independent, black and white comic book. It became a worldwide phenomenon that launched a line of toys, video games, and TV shows. One of those shows included an episode that featured graphic images of a decomposing body. No, this is not about The Walking Dead. It's about everyone's favorite martial arts mastering, weapon-wielding, sewer-dwelling, pizza-loving, shell-kicking amphibians. For at least one episode, not even the combined ninja skills of Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael could stop the fall of the Banhammer. The 2003 TMNT episode titled Insane in the Membrane has nothing to do with the rap anthem by Cypress Hill. Instead, the episode revolved around one of the turtle's most nefarious foes, the sinister scientist Dr. Baxter Stockman. The episode features an origin story for the devious doctor as it shows him as a young boy experimenting with a cockroach. Stockman's scientific skills led him to create cloned bodies in which he could store his incredible intellect. 
Unfortunately, those bodies would decompose, rot away, and fall apart. While the episode aired unedited in other countries, it was considered too disturbing for US audiences. The episode did not air in the US until 2015 on the Nicktoons channel. According to series producer Lloyd Goldfein, the decision not to air the episode came down to a change at the Fox Broadcast Standards and Practices office. In 2006, Goldfein told the official TMNT website, there was a change of personnel in the Fox BS and P offices and no one involved in the original approvals was still employed at Fox. Upon seeing the episode, they were said to be horrified and that there was no way they could air the episode. The classic Looney Tunes shorts launched some of the most iconic characters in the history of the medium. Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Wile E. Coyote, The Roadrunner, Speedy Gonzalez, Pepe Le Pew. If a cartoon character Hall of Fame existed, these names would be first ballot entrants. That's all, folks. So it's only natural that these legends would inspire a new generation of characters. And thus was born Tiny Toon Adventures. And just as the original Looney Tunes had sparked their share of controversy, their successors would also crack up all the censors. The 1991 episode Elephant Issues featured a story entitled One Beer in which Buster Bunny knocks back a brewski. He shares the beverage with his best friends, Plucky Duck and Hampton J. Pig. While splitting a single bottle of beer between them, the three youngsters get as hammered as a college freshman on his first spring break. Buster even breaks the fourth wall, telling Hampton, I know, but in this episode, we're showing the evils of alcohol. One of those evils happens when the friends engage in a belching contest for the ages. Plucky gets the bright idea to steal a car and take his buddies on a drunken joyride. The trio goes as far as to reenact the ending to the classic film Thelma and Louise as Plucky drives them off of a cliff. Elephant Issues is the one episode in the series to be banned by its original network, Fox Kids. Naturally, network honchos were hesitant to air an episode that featured underage drinking, auto theft, DWI, and their apparent self-inflicted demise. It wouldn't air in reruns until 2013, long after Buster and the gang were of legal drinking age. We have seen some Nick shows that have had specific episodes earn a ban while the series keeps going. Some episodes have gotten their creators in hot water, but their shows continue airing on the network. But one instance not only got the show cancelled, but it also got its creator fired. This fate befell John Crickfalusi, the mind behind the classic animated series Ren and Stimpy. Crickfalusi came up with the characters of Ren, a hyperactive chihuahua, and Stimpy, a dull-witted Manx cat. Ren and Stimpy was one of Nickelodeon's biggest animated hit series of the 1990s. Crick Felucci's creation was also one of the network's most controversial shows as it featured lots of toilet humor, dark comedy, and heaping helpings of violence. This content constantly led to Crick Felucci running afoul of Nick's standards and practices department, aka The Censors. The final straw came in the form of the episode titled Man's Best Friend. In this episode, George Licker sees Ren and Stimpy in a pet store window and decides to adopt them. After a night in their new home, the duo must deal with their owner's alter ego, a drill instructor determined to whip them into shape. While Stimpy complies with George's orders, Ren starts to resent his new owner's authoritarian habits. Ren makes his displeasure known by wailing away on George with a boat oar. Nickelodeon refused to air the episode during the show's second season in 1992, largely due to its violent content. Instead, it would air on TNN, now Paramount Network, in 2003. Nick cancelled Ren and Stimpy and fired Crick Felucci in 1992, reportedly due to him falling behind on the network's production schedules. When a show gets suddenly cancelled, its writers, directors, actors, and crew members can experience a range of emotions. The end of a show can bring up sadness, frustration, and anger. When creative types undergo these emotions, they often find creative ways to express those feelings. The minds behind the Nick cartoon Angry Beavers found a highly creative way to vent their frustrations when the show came to an end. The 2001 finale Bye Bye Beavers featured the soon-to-be unemployed beavers contemplating their final moments. The episode didn't so much break the fourth wall as it shattered it with a wrecking ball and blasted it to pieces with dynamite. Norbert, the brains of the operation, tells his brother Daggett the horrible truth about their existence. We, Norbert says, are a cartoon. Wake up and smell the Korean ink and paint, he implores his dim bulb brother. Voice actors Nick Bakai, who played Norbert, and Richard Stephen Horvitz, who played Daggett, even referred to each other by their real names. 
They also take shots at the network, criticizing how the company shows reruns ad nauseum while refusing to share revenues with the show's creators. After reviewing the script and storyboards, the network refused to air the episode. In a 2015 interview with Vice, Angry Beavers writer Michael Wright discussed the network's decision. We got approval to do the episode, and every step of the way, Nickelodeon approved moving to the next stage. Then, they saw it all put together and said, wait, this makes us look bad, so they stopped it. The only aspect of the finale available to viewers is the audio track Bakai and Horvitz recorded for the episode and a few storyboards. Actor Richard Stephen Horvitz makes another appearance on this list, this time in a starring role. Horvitz provided the voice for the title character in Invader Zim, a Nick animated series that ran in 2001 and 2002. Zim is an alien from the planet Urk. He and his robot dog Gurr have been expelled after Zim almost destroyed the planet. His mission? Conquer the planet Earth and turn the human race into mindless servants. His biggest problem? He's the size of a grade schooler. His solution? Infiltrate a grade school to learn more about the mysteries of humanity. One of the more bizarre plots that Zim hatches involves a treasured tradition among school children and parents alike, the annual candy sales contest. In the episode Door to Door, Zim aspires to win the mystery prize that goes to the school's top candy seller. The mystery of the prize. His idea? Place virtual reality helmets on his prospective customers and show them what will happen if they don't buy his candy. The helmets show them the results of an alien invasion, complete with burning buildings and smoldering rubble. Zim's plan is so successful that he sells over a million units and earns his mystery prize. Zim also uncovers the mystery of the prize. It doesn't exist. It was just an empty promise to encourage the kids to sell more candy. The episode aired in March 2002, but it was scheduled to air months earlier. The scheduled air date? September 14, 2001. Nick executives reconsidered airing an episode that featured such wanton destruction just days after the 9-11 attacks. Instead, the footage featuring the damaged buildings was edited out and the episode aired the following spring. So what do you think? Were there any other questionable moments that we missed? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to like this video, share it with your Nickelodeon fan friends, and subscribe to The Binger to get notified about our latest videos. Thanks for watching.